Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. It is Tuesday, September 24th. Um, Pretty big weekend for you guys out there. Lots going on. We're going to do the Team Ordinary Race Recap in just a second. Uh, It's been a little bit nutty here the last 48 hours or so. Uh, Ellie just turned 10 months old. And, you know, she's kind of at that age where, at that age, uh, <laughs> well, it's, we're approaching, you know, we celebrate these birthdays monthly. So it's uh, one month, two month, three month, whatever. All the, and, and we get to this one year, right? This magical, arbitrary one year mark. And I think one year is kind of like, all right, we can stop celebrating the monthly birthdays. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my pet peeves is when you ask someone how old their kid is and they, and they give you like, uh, 17 months. Cause that's a math problem for me. <laughs> that's like, uh, all right, 12 months in a year, 17 minus 12, one year and five months. I want to just say like a year, year and a half. How about that? Stop making it a math problem for me. I, uh, you know, it's not like marathon running, right? So marathon running, if you say you're a five hour marathoner, then you got to be uh, five hours flat or through that, right? But if you're 501, you're not a five-hour marathoner. So it's not like that with age, with kids' age. It's like um, just round, just round. And I get it. You want to talk about months or they, they do change a lot from, from in that first year. But beyond that, it's like, ah, no one really cares. Don't give me a math problem. If they're a year, they're a year. You can round a year and a half. You want to say that, uh, you know, a little over a year. That's fine. That's good terminology. That's a little guidance. I appreciate that. Almost a year. Even better. If you don't want to give me that 11, 11 month and you want to say al- almost a year, that's great. But just don't give me the math problem. I don't need it. I don't. 17 months is not an age. <laughs> 17 months is a math problem. Um, but anyway, she, uh, it is amazing to see how big she's getting. It's amazing to see how much she's grown. Really, I feel like the last three months, she's just grown incredibly. And you parents out there, you know that first year, it's just amazing because you, you, know, you think about all the lead up until having a baby and all you picture is that little, you know, that little newborn. And, you know, you work, you know, nine months, you expect that little newborn, you get that new newborn and all, and it's like you blink your eyes. And, uh, and she's into the infant stage. She's crawling around. She's saying a few words. She's getting into trouble. She's in the walker. I, I've, I've had podcasts canceled already because I've been in the middle of talking and she's, she's, uh, flying around in the walker above my head. Um, so that's one of the reasons why the podcast, podcast is out on Tuesday <laughs> today. I just couldn't get it done. I had, I had, uh, Indy 500 going on upstairs with this kid. I'm going to have to plan this a little bit better. So let's do a little bit of the uh, Team Ordinary recap. First things first, a um, little recap on the gear order. Uh, we're waiting on the bags, still waiting on that. It's on its way. A lot of people have been asking me now, what's Team Ordinary? What's Team Ordinary? And I kind of want to send them to the website. And in actuality, the web- so the website, you can actually register for Team Ordinary on the website. And it is live, even though it says in- it says it's not. You can actually do that. It's live. Um, I would hold off though. A couple people have been very aggressive. Just go on and uh, and they just registered. Um, I would hold off until the launch. We uh, we've got an official launch coming. It's just a matter of when I get these bags and when we can get you know put the packages together and, and start sending them out. Again, only because I don't want to like charge people money for things that I don't have yet. It just makes sense, right? I'm just trying to be. Um, somewhat honorable and not have to refund people later on if, if, you know, if things don't come to fruition or if things aren't up to par. That's all. That's all. Uh, but really, Team Ordinary is going great. The bios that you guys have sent me are amazing. We're going to start going through those one by one on on the show, on, the, uh, on our Facebook group, Ordinary Marathoners. Just check that out. We're up over 700 users today. As of this morning, I want to thank Dan Damore uh, for inviting a whole bunch of people into the group. I hope you guys find the group um, helpful. Damore Demerrier. Huh? You like that, Dan? <laughs> I've been working on that one for like an hour. Uh, 
anyway, um, love having you guys there. I hope you guys find some uh, some value in the group. And whether or not you know you want to join in, jump in two feet right away and start uh, start talking about running and, and your background and introduce yourself. Feel free, or you want to be a lurker. That's that's cool too. Whatever you guys want to do uh, is fine by me. Now, Team Ordinary had a busy busy weekend. A lot going on above and beyond the races this past weekend. You guys are crushing your training runs. A lot of marathons. We're in this marathon season now where, you know, just a lot of races coming back to back to back. It is it's interesting to see. It's it's great to watch you guys uh, train and and get ready for your races. They are right around the corner. Um, Ron Booz, the Supervillain 10K in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, Ron, in this race, apparently you had to dress up as either a superhero or a villain. Um, I, th- I feel like Ron was like towing the line a little bit. He, he wore his ordinary marathon shirt, the baby blue, obviously a charity race. That sounds to me like superhero. Uh, but Ron has this really long beard and he kind of like forked it into two. And, and that to me screams villain. So I don't know. Uh, I, I feel like he's kind of undecided here, unable to make his, make up his mind. Uh, but he had a good race. He ran a 10 K uh, I got in his case a little bit because he's training for a 50K at Marine Corps Marathon. And I'm thinking, hey, man, you gotta if you're training for a 50K, you really got to get out there. Well, he proved, proved me wrong by going out the next day and running uh, 16 miles with over 1,000 feet of elevation in that run, which is uh, super impressive, Ron. And, uh, and you're getting ready. You're going to be ready. I, mean, I know you're going to be ready for that 50K at Marine Corps Marathon. Looking forward to, to meeting you there and looking forward to uh, celebrating after. Katie Mayo ran the Wicked Half Marathon in Salem, Mass., uh, yeah, Salem, Mass., the uh, the old witchcraft place. Katie was gunning for two and a half hours. I think she just missed it. Just missed it at 2.32, I think she came in. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a PR. I probably should have asked her that. I know it's a good race for her, a solid race. She was really setting her sights high, and she almost had it, almost had it. But she's been working hard, and she's, she's uh, going to be running Marine Corps Marathon as well. She's going to crush that race. Sunday, we had the Montreal Half Marathon. Nick Doe was out there running and uh, got, it, got it done in about 2.15. Um, beat his ex by one second. And, uh, and, I, and I guess the funny part was they didn't start together, so it wasn't like he edged her out at the finish. They just kind of, that was the times. He, uh, he beat her by one second. I don't know if it was ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, ex-landlord, ex-teacher, ex-whatever, but anytime you beat an ex by one second. I think that's bragging rights. So good for you. And it looked, you know what? They were kind of joking around about it on, on Facebook. So it's all in good fun. And uh, good to see you guys out there accomplishing all that great stuff this past weekend. And again, all you guys doing your training runs. I've seen training runs 20 miles, 16 miles, 15 miles. Uh, Stephanie and Aura did 15 miles on Sunday. Crushed it crushed it as their coach i'm kind of like a little bit concerned i get concerned i'm just like you know it's like watching you know it's like watching your children and uh <laughs> and just hoping they succeed and they crush their their training run they're really working hard and i think they're going to be ready for their doing marine corps marathon as well uh so i wanted to talk a little bit about dan Demore. dan is a friend of mine who i don't know we've been talking for uh probably a little over a year or two um met through the podcast. He's been a guest on the podcast a while back, kind of disappeared a little while ago. Uh, and I never know sometimes like social media is a little bit fickle and I always, I never quite know. I, and I never have a good grasp of, of why, you know, you talk to people for a while and then they kind of, you, you just, then you don't. <laughs> so Dan kind of disappeared for a while. And I think part of it was he had an injury. He was running, he was trying to lose weight. He was, he was, uh, and he was, he had some really, big goals and, and his sights were set on some really big races and then he got injured and I think it kind of fell apart for him a little bit and maybe that's why he disappeared I don't really know um, I internalize things a lot and I have a, a you know I feel self-conscious about things and I'm like I always wonder all right did I say something or did it you know and it turns out that no I didn't it was just we just hadn't talked and there's nothing wrong with that and I, I actually you know I find out you know I find that refreshing to a degree. I, I love when you have friends and it's okay not to talk for months sometimes and it's okay. And then you kind of just circle back up later on and it's like you never skip a beat. I, I, I like those kind of, it's like those not, no nonsense, uh, no drama friendships. Those are my favorite. Those are my favorite kind. Now, Dan, in, in addition to that, Dan is a breath of fresh air for me. 
Yeah, I know. It's like a love letter to Dan. Uh, but Dan, when I talk to Dan, it's always high energy. It's always optimism. It's always, Dan is a macro thinker at times. Probably some of his friends are going to laugh at that. Uh, but Dan sees the, he tries to see the big picture and tries to give me ideas and, oh, try it. Maybe you should do one of, do this or do that, do that. And he gives me all these ideas for the, for the podcast and for the group. Uh, I introduced him to Team Ordinary. I think he, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to be involved. Um, he's done a podcast in the past. His his group is called Obese Mode. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. It's O B E A S T M uh, and Mode. <laughs> and uh, he's got like 200 people in his group over on Facebook. You can check that out. I definitely recommend it. Um, so he's trying to get that up and going again. His podcast up and going again. And you know he's asking me about my coaching and and things of that nature. And really. When someone shows interest in the things that you're doing and then kind of even tries to give you more ideas on how to grow things and, and make things better, it's it's really refreshing. Because when you do things like this and you do a podcast and you do – and you can kind of relate this, I'm sure, to your own personal lives in, in ways. You know, you hit – not that you hit a rut, but you kind of just get into it. You, you go through the motions. Everything's the same every day. You, you have tasks that you need to perform. You do them and you move on. And you never kind of try to build it up. You're just trying to check the box. And sometimes you fall into those kind of, uh, you know, zones, I would say, where you just kind of continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. And you're just kind of hoping things grow on their own without actually pushing yourself forward. Well, it was really good to have this conversation with Dan because he definitely gave me a lot of great ideas, a lot of big ideas. And the thing is, so with Dan, it's like sometimes he gives me an idea and I'm like, oh, that's great. And I think of something like kind of close to it, or maybe we've done something similar, or maybe I'm on, I'm working on something that's very similar that uh, I just need a little bit of a push to get that going. And it's it was really, it was motivational for me. Uh, so I do want to thank Dan. And, I, you know, it's funny because I think about that and I've had similar conversations with some other people in the past. And those are my favorite conversations to have. When someone kind of talks, talks about the things that shows interest in what you're doing and then um, gives you ideas on how to make it better. You know, the, the, there's no criticism. There's no, it's only growth. It's positive. It's optimism. It's refreshing and it, it makes you feel good. And, uh, so I do, th- I thank Dan for that conversation, for reaching out. It's cause it's been a while. It's been a while. And, uh, and we gotta, I think we have some, some ways that we're going to help each other out. And I love that too. Any kind of time you can sort of cooperate and, uh, and kind of join forces and push things forward. That's that's all good too, and then I kind of took a step back from there, and uh, you know I had this conversation with Dan yesterday, so I kind of took a step back from there, and I had sort of other thoughts, and and we had a conversation with one of our guests. Uh, I, I'm not even going to mention her name. You can figure it out if you if you heard it. Uh, we were talking about support, and this is just a little bit off off topic, but just in general being in a supportive environment, being around people who support what you do, being around people who do what you like and how important that is. And a little personal story from me. And one of the things that I've always kind of had a thought about and wondered about is how much I absorb uh, my personal life and lifestyle and life choices through my environment and the people around me. How much do I make decisions based on my own personal, legitimate personal desires and just sort of the atmosphere that I'm in, right? The uh, how much do I adapt to my surroundings versus make my own choices? And it's just sort of an open thought. Maybe you guys can relate. Maybe you can't. <clears throat> but I, I worked in Manhattan for a number of years for a company and worked with a lot of people who are my age, right around within 10 years, give or take, young adults. Most of them were single. Most of them lived in the city. They had, they loved, embraced their single lives in the city and it was great. And I kind of adapted to that. Um, and I had relationships and I had, you know, whatever, but it was always, there was never a sense of, I, I need kids. I need to settle down. I need, it was always kind of like a, a single life, right? It was, yeah, you get out, you move around, you try to stay active. Uh, but there was never any pressure sort of to like, to settle down or do anything like that. And I feel like, and I don't, I just, I don't know how much of the fact, maybe I just embraced that because I was younger and maybe I didn't, maybe I embraced it because that was my surroundings and that's what everyone was doing. So I just went along with the crowd. My job moved to Boston a few years later in my early thirties. And when I moved to Boston, 
I worked in a different office. There was different people there. They were all smart, nice guys. Most of them married uh, with kids. And now I'm changing my surroundings. And lo and behold, within the next three years, I'm married and I have a daughter, my daughter, Sam. And I always kind of wondered more of as, as a science experiment than as of, you know, any kind of personal reflection, I guess, was how much did my surroundings have on my decision? How much influence did my surroundings have on my decision making my and my life choices at that time? If I would have stayed in New York with the single New York people, would I have always been single in New York and just enjoyed that? When I moved to Boston, if everyone was single in, in that office, would I have chosen to be single as well? Because that's, I mean, that's, I'm spending 90% of my waking hours in the office with my coworkers. And how much of that do you absorb? Furthermore, like, you know, like I said, we were talking to a guest a couple weeks ago and, uh, and she was saying that a lot of her family and people she hangs around, they don't necessarily support her running. Not that they don't support it, but they don't offer any um, words of encouragement. If anything, they look down on it. And a lot of that is, is jealousy, I'm sure. Uh, but again, how hard is it to be in an environment, to be in surroundings where people don't support the things that you're trying to do and support your goals. And that's why when I thought about it and and I thought about the conversation I had with Dan, I was just like, man, it's just nice to be surrounded by positive people. And it's nice to kind of have that, uh, that support when you need it. Not even, not even when you need it, just in general. It also reminded me of when I go to Lake Placid for the Ironman, how, you know, you exit this environment where you you live in your town, maybe half the people are active and energetic and go out and work out or want to hang out or do whatever. Um, and, you know, half the people are kind of like, are just not, they just, they don't care. They don't, you know, and you know, you know, the people you talk to the people and you, you know, you hang out with who you hang out with, but uh, you know, you don't necessarily get a, that constant influence. It's not that, you know, the outdoor lifestyle, that exercise lifestyle, the, the, the active um, the activity, it's not always there to, to kind of force you, not force you, but, um, you know, if you have friends and then what they want to do is, is drink on Friday night, that's fine. What are you going to do? You're going to drink on Friday night. But if you have friends who, Hey, they want to go hiking on, on Saturday morning, they want to go for a bike ride or a long run. If those were, that's what your friends are doing. What are you going to do? What do you know? What are you, you know, you, in a way you kind of choose the people that you hang out with and, and that influence the way you behave. And it kind of made me wonder, and, and one of the things I was talking about Lake Placid was, you know, when I'm up there sometimes, it's like you're surrounded by all these people that have active lifestyle. Almost everyone has an active lifestyle. And I think I made, I've made the comment a couple times where I wake up in the morning and I walk at 6 o'clock, 6.30 to go to breakfast or to go get coffee. And as I'm outside, you know, you pass seven joggers and 10 people on the bike and, and you're like, man, like, am I doing something wrong here? Everyone else seems to be exercising and I'm the one going to, going to stuff my face for breakfast. Um, and it makes you want to be a part of it. It makes you want, uh, to join in and, you know, so I I don't know, it just, this was my thought and this was kind of what, I guess what I wanted to share for the day and and just sort of the theme for today's podcast is, and we'll leave it as an open and look, I'm not, I'm not trying to kind of tell you to, you know, to call your friends up and tell them to go take a hike. Uh, that's not, that's not the case. What I'm trying to say is, um, how, really, I'm trying to ask the question, I guess. That's that's the way we're going to phrase this. We're going to ask the question, how much does your environment, how much does your surroundings play? Uh, what kind of effect do they have on your choices, your personal choices and your personal activity levels? And do you naturally sort of gravitate towards the people, what the people you're hanging out with do? Or to what extent do you define um your activities and the things that you do. And it got me also thinking about my own coaching in terms of coaching. Uh, and in, in general, you know, one of the things, uh, cause I, I've been trying to play this out in my head about sort of my, as I define my coaching philosophy and, and things of that nature, obviously I'm just starting in this and I, and I have a few clients and, and they're all energetic and, and, They've been really doing great, honestly. They really have been doing awesome. And the energy level is high. And it's always high. It's, it's you know, it's starting to get a little nervous because we're all coming up against our big races, I think. And we all want to make sure that we're prepared. Um, but the energy level, I mean, there's it's a good level. It is a good level. It's a good surrounding to be in. And I like that. And it, it makes me wonder, um, when I, so when I was a kid, I'm reflecting 
always played sports. Almost every, any moment at any given time, I was probably on a team, be it football, basketball, baseball, whatever it may be. So there was always practice, right? Always practice. You always had practice. So in high school, you always had baseball practice, football practice after school. Monday to Friday, there were no days off. Basketball practice, no, no days off, right? So you had, a, you had a schedule. You had something you had to adhere to. Um, and usually those practices were two hours a day. So you get out of school, you kind of hang out for an hour, you wait for practice to start, your coach shows up, and then you practice two hours and you go home. As it, it forces you to have that discipline. It forces you to have that discipline, right? Because you can't not show up. Otherwise, you're never going to play. You're never going to learn. You're never going to do whatever it is you want to do. You're never going to reach your goals. If your goal is to play, if your goal is to win, you don't show up at practice, you're not going to win. And I think a lot of that is we lose a lot of that after we stop participating in, in sports and we start, we stop you know, we kind of get into adulthood and we're on our own and we, we're forced to have self-discipline if we want to stay active. And to a degree, I do believe that coaching is that cog for some people. It definitely would have, you know, is for me, is, you know, as opposed to just relying on rolling out of bed and saying, oh, what am I going to do today? Which I've done in the podcast before. And you guys, when you followed me in Ironman training, I did that a lot. A lot of days I rolled out of bed and said, hey, what's on, you know, it, what's not what's on the schedule today? What do I have to do today? I'd say, what am I going to, you know, what might I do today? Hmm, let's decide on the fly. Um, and I think what one of the things that coaching does is it forces that discipline. Here's your prescription for the day. You got to get it done. Now, you talk to your athletes, you get their schedules, you know when they're free, you try to fit in uh, as much as you can in the time that they have so that they can maximize their training, right? You don't want to overdo it in parts, you don't want to uh, underwhelm them in other parts, you want to make sure they have enough rest when they need it, you want to make sure that they are maximizing the uh, the output of their of their workouts. It's a puzzle that needs to be put together. It's a puzzle that needs to be completed by the athletes. So you basically, you know, you have the puzzle pieces in front of you and you break them up and you feed them to the athlete and they have to kind of put them together um, and complete what they need to complete in the time frame that you have in mind. And and then you, as, as you can see, the puzzle starts fitting together and it starts getting bigger and bigger and better and better. And, uh, and man, it just, I, it, to, I wonder... It just makes me wonder as a coach that coaching, and, and I don't know how I got from Dan to Moore conversation about being productive um, and having these great ideas into coaching, but my coaching philosophy, it kind of rolled into this. Uh, one, of the, one of the parts of this coaching philosophy is, is you have to hand them the prescription. You got to give them that here, this is what you need to do. Uh, and this can be done within the time frame and scope of your day and your week and your month and your lead up to training. You need to make this time available. And you know what? And if you can't, you're going to have to in this area. You you know, you have to make other choices, other decisions. Why, when you were a kid, were you able to kind of just have those two hours a day? And as an adult, you struggle to find those two hours a day. And there are things, there are, I'm not saying there aren't legitimate excuses. Jobs, kids, relationships, things that you need to do, obviously, there are things that take precedent. And as an adult, you have to, you have to weigh those. But you, when you, you know, if you're setting your alarm for seven in the morning, you know, and you're staying up at night watching Monday night football and you, you say, you're telling me you can't work out on Tuesday morning because you're up watching Monday night football. That's, that's a, and that's a decision you have to make. And I'm using that as an example because that's me. That's what I do. That's what I do. I, you know, last night I turned it off. I turned off the game at halftime because I just was like, I don't really have any um, investment in this game. I don't really care about the game. I'm kind of getting sick of the NFL <laughs> and uh, sleep was more important. So, you know, it's the coaching kind of helps bring all that together. It, you know, and it's not, it's look, it's not my outright coaching philosophy about discipline and getting things done. I, I'm developing all this as it goes and I'm kind of, I'm enjoying it and I'm seeing success in, in the people that I'm coaching and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, 
And it just, I, I can't wait for that to continue. I just, I can't wait. I can't wait to get more athletes. I, I can't wait. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry uh, to help you guys out if you need it. So uh, again, I want to thank Dan Demore for the motivation. I want to thank, uh, I want to thank you guys for listening too. Um, I feel like I'm, I just went off into a little scatterbrainedness, but that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Sometimes that happens on the podcast when I'm talking to myself for too long. Um, Again, congratulations all you guys on your racing this weekend. Uh, you guys are doing awesome. We'll have more on, on next weekend. I'm pretty sure we have some races next week that we're going to be we're going to be talking about on the uh, on the next podcast. Future guests, I'm trying to I'm, I'm getting Laura Stebbins on. I believe we're going to we're going to record next Tuesday. Uh, Melissa Khan, she's going to be on soon. She's just been busy lately. We're going to try to um, rope her in at some point. And I got a few other guests that I'm working on, but we just, I don't know, we haven't, uh, haven't nailed it down. So for, as of right now, I got nobody for this week, but I'm not too concerned. Um, that being said, uh, I hope you guys get a great week of training in. I hope, um, I hope I made sense today. Sometimes I feel like I just kind of jabber on and I just, uh, I don't really make sense, but, um, and answer that question for me. How much do you think your surroundings play when in terms of uh your support system and your own decisions make your own decision making what do your you know the people you hang out with the people who um support you or don't support you how much do they influence your choices and the things that you do and the goals you set for yourself and uh you know and how much you know do they keep you disciplined i tell you what on a personal level now uh, i could not accomplish. I could not finish an Ironman. I could not train for an Ironman without support in my family and, uh, and being given allowed to the time to accomplish the things, the training, um, the trips, the travel, all that stuff without support, I'd never make it. So if that's the answer for me. Uh, I'm interested to hear what the answer is for you. With that being said, uh, we're going to call it a day. Remember every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it guys. Remember to like our video and subscribe to our channel.